What to you uh, is the most beautiful idea in mathematics? Another one we can ask is, what is the most beautiful equation in mm. mathematics? Mm. Well, I mean, <laughs> you see I, the, I may have just broken your brain. The, <laughs> <laughs> because, because what your brain I'm, is doing is walking down a long memory lane <laughs> of beautiful experiences. Well, you see, in mathematics, we have this idea that there, uh, we have an idea of a set, right? So we have a collection of things, for instance, you know, the set of tables, the, the set of chairs, and so on, or set of microphones. But it could be a set of numbers. Could be a set of ideas. Could be a set of formulas, mathematical equations. And then we have the notion of an ordered set, ordered, like the set in which there is order, which means that for every two members of the set, we'll say which one is better than the other or greater than the other. For instance, all numbers are ordered. Five is greater than three, five is less than seven, and so on. But not all sets are ordered. So the set of beautiful theorems is not, or beautiful equations is not ordered. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, there are many best equations. And so Richard Feynman, uh, um, chose one, which I think one of the best, is that if you take E, the base of natural logarithm, to the power pi i, so you have pi, you have E in it, the base of natural logarithm, you have pi, i, which is square root of negative one, then the, re the result is negative one. So that's up there, for sure, in the pantheon of beautiful formulas, you know, that uh, every I think pretty much every mathematician would agree. Um, I don't know what my favorite one is. I'm just lingering on that one, uh, Euler's identity. What makes it beautiful? Just a few symbols together. Right. I mean, part of it is actually just trying to define what, what is beautiful about mathematics um, that is uh, laid in there in this particular equation that is somehow revealed when the human eye looks at it. Mm. What? Why is it beautiful, do you think? Pi? There is an element of surprise in it. How how is it possible? We always think of pi as the ratio between the circumference of a circle and its diameter. Mm -hmm. Here we are taking some number to the power pi, not even pi, mind you, but pi <laughs> multiplied by square root of negative one. <laughs> <laughs> Surely this is something completely incomprehensible. And yet the result is negative one. You see? And if you take e to the power two pi i, you get one, actually one. Um, so I would guess that that's, but in other words, the initial reaction is just that of a surprise, I guess. For, I, I guess for anyone uh, who first comes across. That these three folks, four folks got together. Yeah. It, uh, it reminds me of the, the idea that uh, Hitler, Stalin, Trotsky, and Freud were all in Vienna in some early, at the beginning of the 20th And Wittgenstein was, was a classmate of, of, of Hitler, you know this? I did not know this, no. Yeah. So there, it's, it makes you, you know, you can imagine a situation where they're all sitting at a bar together at some point, mm. not knowing it, but they somehow, it all made sense in space time to be located there. And that's what this feels like, some kind of intersection. Intersection, yes. But I would say that uh, after the initial shock, you you look at the proof of this equation, and it actually does make sense. And actually it is uh, is nothing but the statement that the circumference of the circle is, and, and in fact, it's in this case, it's the circumference of a semicircle is equal to pi. To pi. And that's where it comes from. In the end, the truth is simple. In the end, the truth is simple. Not necessarily easy, but simple. <laughs>